All right, our last talk of the day is Jeffrey Sarnoff. He'll be talking about extended precision. Uh, thank you all. I'm, I am going to talk about extended precision, particularly uh, a new package that I'm working on called ARB Numerics, which is built around uh, an underlying C library called ARB, written by Frederick Johansson. And thanks to him and thanks to Bill Hart and Thomas Hoffman of Nemo fame uh, for the help they've given me. So ARB Numerics is where you want to be if you're into precision and performance. Compared to Big Float, it's considerably faster at reasonable precisions. And it, it, it actually uses a lot of the Big Float library, but just in a way different from how Big Float does and more efficiently. I export three types. There's a corresponding to a floating point type, a real type, which is a floating point type with a little uh, uncertainty interval, and a complex type, which is a pair of reals. And the real and complex types are guaranteed to be valid enclosures at the end of the day if you query your answer in terms of uh, the interval of uncertainty, your true answer will, will fall within there. So I'm not bringing anything to the ARB library. What I am bringing is Julia's perspective in how to access and, and, and utilize these, these things. And, and it's not trivial because the RBC library is not written in any manner that uh, one would write a library for Julia. Here are some of the functions that we have. Uh, and I, the stuff at the top, most of them you'll be familiar with. Uh, then there's the midpoint. Uh, the interval stuff, next, next to last, and, and at the very bottom uh, are some precision commands. What I want to point out here is there are two sorts of precision. There's the precision if you are a computer scientist, mathematician, and you want full control over every little thing that you're doing. That be the working precision, you can access and modify that directly. And then there's the precision if you want to feel very comfortable about the answers that you get. You can just rely on them, and you don't necessarily have any interest in, in the underneath stuff. And those are the precision and set precision. Uh, these are uh, parallel and complementary ways of accessing this stuff. So I said that they're faster than big nums. Here's my test. That's my test function. And you get the relative speed up of the... Uh, our floats to, to big nums at, at different levels of precision. Not bad. All right, uh, there's another small library I wrote called Readables, and that's to allow us to read the results that we get when there are lots of numbers involved. A common use for variable precision is to use it variably. And, uh, you know, if you have a solver of some sort elsewhere that's going to be modifying the precision that you're working at, you want to be able to use that solver and not really care about what kind of an R entity is coming in. And we do that. I'll point out that you don't have to do it this way. You can use the precision commands. But doing it this way lets me show you this. We have a union of the R types, and that could include R complex. Uh, and then for each one, each type in the union, there's one line. And it's a very familiar sort of formulation. You're indirectly calling the constructor. But what's happening here is you're, you're, that indirection is through a union, right? We're, we're, we're activating the union. And to me, what's brilliant about this is it shows how Julia has begun to percolate a lot of its internal uh, symmetry and wonderfulness throughout the system that we have access to. All right, so at the end of the day, this is the stuff I care about with numerical computing. I want to get better values. I want to avoid the bad ones. I'd like my results to be more accurate than they otherwise would be. And I really want to do a whole lot less with a great deal more power. This is a little Julia without words. 
at the moment, this sort of activity is, is fragile, but we're getting there. And then, finally, th this is my introduction to our numerics. Uh, it's still preliminary. When it's really ready to use, I'll announce it on discourse. Uh, but as of 20 minutes ago, it built, and it will do what you saw here today. Thank you very much. So if I understand correctly, you do expose the interval uh, if you, I actually did this for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. you've got all the control that you want, including manually adjusting the size of that. So how, can you show like, creating an interval? So or, or I, 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 I can. One of the lesser known quotes of Alan Kay is, you cannot explain away the demo. So I'm going to refrain from that. You can do it yourself, or I'll show you later. Okay. I just don't want to sure. tempt fate. Um, do you have issues comparing numbers? I don't have any issues comparing numbers. Uh, <laughs> no, the, the, there, there's a lot of, of great detail that goes into, particularly when you have uh, numbers that are computed at different precisions. And, um, you know, I, I, when I get to it, I take great care with things like that because I, I really do want the people that are using it without a great deal of background knowledge to, to be able to properly feel comfortable with what they see. Is the plan to drop big float in favor of this? Um, I'm agnostic plan? about that. That's not my call, and it's not my system to, to decide upon. Okay, so you think it? You think it would be a good idea? You think it's I mean, so? <laughs> <laughs> I always favor my own work. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the difference is that Big Float is ostensibly going to give you um, properly rounded to the last digit, and and ARB stuff will give you a, an interval. Um, okay. But I am I, I assure you that uh, when you're using it in the mode where hey, I'd really like to believe in what I see, I, I will take a lot of effort behind the scenes to make sure that that happens, that, that you know, it's properly rounded, all that. And big floats are, are not as easy to use as one may think. Really, a lot of times what you need to do is create the big float from a string, and if you don't, you end up getting something that's rounded correctly, but it's not the thing that you want to be rounded. Okay. He, 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 yeah. Got some clarification here. It's not, it's not, uh, so, so I, 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 I thought I understood from this that you have, you have one, uh, one set, one type which is a potential big float replacement, and another one that has intervals. Well, that yes, but correct. they're all based on the same underlying technology, the the, the ARB library, which works off of intervals. The the, the float is 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 just um, the real type without the interval part, and and it's pretty much computed that way. Okay. What are the prospects for writing ARB in Julia? <laughs> um, Rewriting, I guess. So uh, ARB is, is a huge library. You know, it's got polynomial stuff, lots of different things. Writing the parts that are most important to, to us in Julia, I, I think it's entirely possible, and the, so the single biggest obstacle is that the logic that our uses actually calls into the BigFloat library a lot. So decoupling it from that, we would have to have our own uh, variant, uh, you know, non-GPL variant of, of BigFloat. But the basic underlying, uh, basically, the basic yeah, underlying no type problem. is... In is fact, we could do it in a way that in some cases is more efficient. And all the polynomial stuff is whatever is yeah, already yeah, in Julia, yeah, yeah. so I guess. Maybe we can have that discussion. <laughs> so
So yeah, one thing that, if I'm not mistaken, one thing that we are missing from using uh, ARB floats, um, so first of all, I, I, I love ARB floats, so I use it with the Diffy Q stuff all the time. It's, it's, it's been amazing. But one thing that I've noticed that we are missing, though, is that uh, um, the, the original ARB library has these overloads, right, for numerical linear algebra. So that way it can do numerical linear algebra at higher precision, and it specializes on some of the operations to improve them. Um, is, right. it, is there some way that we can have these ex uh, same overloads on the Julia, you know, uh, matrix of ARB floats, or is there something about how it assumes the, you know, the, the data is represented that's different? Chris, your request is sufficient. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll do that. All right, cool. I, I can't, I can't, it doesn't provide um, the matrix manipulation stuff fully enough to just adopt that and be, and be in good shape, but as far as the internal storage of matrices of this, this stuff, I can certainly do that. All right, thank you. Do we have some more questions? Or, or let's thank uh, Jeffrey Sarnov again.